Is your writing a mess? Does it lack a coherent story? Does it lack a logical flow? Um, are your ideas disconnected from one another? If that's the case, then this video is definitely for you because I'm going to explain exactly you know, why your writing is a mess and more importantly, how you can fix it today. So let's dive right in. If you're new here, my name is Marek Kiczkowiak and I run Academic English Now, where I help early career researchers write more research papers for high impact journals. And in this video, I want to talk about the mess that your writing might have become and show you how to fix it once and for all so that your writing flows logically, there is a coherent story to it, and you're able to do this um, not just once in this current research paper or thesis, but you're able to maintain coherent flow over and over again in any future research papers that you're writing. And these tips as well, in case you're wondering, they're universal. They're going to work for any discipline, whether you're doing anthropology, quantum physics, or something completely different. And they're going to work in the same way for writing, you know, a 300 page thesis, writing a research paper, or writing a short assignment. Um, for an university course, right? So the first really important um, reason why often you know your writing might become messy is the lack of overall structure. Now, what I mean here is that you know all practically all papers, theses, and so on, they will have you know the six main elements. So you need an introduction, right? Um, you need some sort of a literature review, sometimes as part of the introduction. You need a methodology and you need um, results, you need discussion, sometimes put together, and you need a conclusion. If your writing lacks one of these elements, then you know it's going to read messy, and it's also going to sound as if there is no coherent story throughout, right? So that's, that's the first thing. But now, the second thing is that your writing might miss certain important elements in each of those bigger chunks of your text. So let's say if you're writing an introduction, in an introduction you must have you know, the, the importance of your topic at the beginning, and then a brief literature review, and then you must state the, the research gap, and then state your aim. And what sometimes happens is that, for example, people straight away state their aim at the very beginning, or they don't state, the, they don't talk about the literature at all, and they dive in straight to the research gap. And as a result, you know, your writing just seems messy and incoherent because you're lacking one of these important elements, right? And if you're interested in understanding how to exactly write the introduction, I've got another um, video on that. But, you know, this doesn't, of course, just apply to the introduction. It also applies to the methodology section, you know, where, again, you know, there are certain important elements, regardless of your discipline, that you need to include. Like, for example, what you studied or who you studied, sometimes called materials or called the sample, right? You need to talk about the procedures as well. Right, and you need to talk about data analysis. Whether you're doing, you know, anthropology or quantum physics, you need to tell us how you've analyzed your data. And if you don't, then again, your writing seems messy and incoherent. Right, and there is another video as well on this channel where I dive much deeper into how to write the methodology. Um, so you can watch that if you're interested in in finding out a little bit more. But coming back to you know the the, the reasons why your text is a mess. Um, Another thing is the order in which the elements come in. And there is one really important principle that you should follow, and that's from general to specific. What, what does that mean? Well, you know, if we, for example, look at the introduction and writing the introduction, you might have all the elements, right? But maybe they are in the wrong order and they just don't flow. Because in the introduction and other parts of your, th of your paper, you need to go from general to specific. That's why at the beginning you need to present the importance of the topic, right? And outline, you know, the, the frame the general issue, right? And then you dive a little bit, you know, more specific and you talk about what we already know about the topic, i.e. the literature review. Once you've reviewed that, then you can tell us what we don't know yet, i.e. the research gap. If you're not sure what a research gap is, I've got another video as well on that and, this, and it's in the description. Right? But that's more specific, the research gap. And then even more specific, then you can state your aim. Right? But you can't really you know, 
present the research gap before you review the literature. And you can't straight away, you know, review the literature before you presented kind of the importance of this topic and in general framed the issue, right? So that's, you know, that's another reason why your writing might be a mess because you don't go from general to specific and you must do that. Of course, there are other organizing principles, like for example, chronologically. Sometimes, you know, especially when reviewing literature, it might make sense to review it chronologically, right? But this general to specific principle is really universal. Now, another thing that might, you know, make your writing a mess is the way you structure your paragraphs. And, you know, paragraphs really need to start with a topic sentence that summarizes the main idea of this paragraph and then you very clearly explain this idea further and give specific examples of that. So what happens sometimes, you know, in the in, in paragraphs that I see from, you know, early career researchers is that they they kind of try to discuss everything and as a result every single sentence in the paragraph is about a completely different issue. But then, you know, you read that paragraph and you're completely lost like it's a mess like you don't know what this paragraph is about right and that's why your writing becomes incoherent and there is a lack of story and a flow in your writing so remember a paragraph needs to be about one main idea that you're going to develop right and then if you have another main idea well then you need to move on to the next paragraph which brings me to you know to another reason why your writing might be a mess that there are no connections between paragraphs. So sometimes, you know, people write one paragraph and they talk about an issue and then they jump to something else. And in their head, I, I get it, in your head, you know, the connection is clear, but it's not clear to the reader, right? And, and this, these connections sometimes can be very easily shown to the reader. You know, for example, if you've discussed, discussed um, one main problem in the first paragraph, then you could just say, another problem is and then you know this word another provides a very clear link to the previous paragraph right you could also use a word like however moreover therefore to provide that link right so you must have clear links between paragraphs in order to you know to have coherent flow and a story now the next element is lack of links between your sentences within paragraphs or between your ideas. So sometimes, you know, what happens is that, you know, somebody introduces like one idea and then they have another one and another one and another one, right? And again, in their mind, the connections are clear, but they're not obvious to the reader on the text. The reader has to kind of wonder what's, what on earth is going on in this paragraph. So that's why, you know, when you're writing your sentences, kind of ask yourself, like this next sentence that I'm writing, is this an example? Um, am I showing contrast? Am I expanding on the same idea? Am I maybe showing an effect of something? Or maybe am I showing a reason for the previous sentence, right? And if you can't think of any of those kind of um, connections, then it probably means that sentence shouldn't be in that paragraph, right? Um, and because it's going to make the paragraph messy. And one last kind of reason why I think your writing might be messy is because you, you don't explicitly show the connections between ideas, right? And one easy way of fixing it is to use linking words. Linking words are things like, you know, however, although, for contrast, right? Um, or words like therefore or thus to show effect of something, or words like moreover, furthermore, to add more information about the same thing, or words like for example, to give an example of something. Now, I don't mean to say that you want, to, you want every sentence to have a linking word like that, because that would be crazy, but you, know, you do want to show to the reader what the, those connections are. So, you know, if you use those words, it will be much easier for the reader to see the story that you're trying to show them. Um, they're kind of like, you know, like signs on the street. Without those signs in our cities, like we would just have accidents all the time. And, you know, it would be a mess, right? Because people would just do whatever they want to do, right? And it's the same in writing. You need those signs so that the reader, when they read your text or scan it quickly, 
they can see what the story is and what the flow is and where you're going with it, right? So in this video, I talked about the main reason why your writing might be a mess right now and I showed you exactly how to fix it as well right now. And if you want to know more and you want to develop your academic writing to write research papers for high impact journals, then book a free one-to-one -one strategy session with me. And in that session, we're going to first identify, you know, what your main problems are, what your goals are, and we're going to outline a personalized strategy and then see how I can further help you achieve your research goals faster. And if you're interested in doing that and working with me more personally, then the link to book that free strategy session is in the description of this video.